leader of the opposition, Lennox Linton, has been adamant that there will, be, there will not be a free and fair election in Dominica until there is electoral reform. Speaking in response to Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt's budget presentation recently, Linton called attention to the fact that he and his colleagues have been making a plea for electoral reform for several years, but nothing has changed. Since 2005, Madam Speaker, the United Workers Party has been advocating for electoral reform along the lines of improvement recommendations in post-election reports from the Chief Elections Officer, from the Observer Missions, from the CARICOM and the OAS. The Electoral Commission, Madam Speaker, acting in its own deliberate judgment, decided to pursue much needed reform of the electoral process in order to effectively protect it from undue influence, from bribery, voter fraud, and corrupt election practices. Since that decision by the Independent Electoral Commission, as mandated by the Constitution, the Commission has conducted two general elections in 2009 and 2014. Under the same electoral system, it determined is in need of reform. There has been growing public concern, Madam Speaker, over the failure to implement the reforms. Linton indicated that there has been growing public concern about the failure to implement reform as corrupt practices have indeed been observed in the last few general elections, including violations of voter eligibility and bribery. This occasion of the budget presentation of 2017-2018 we are again requesting urgent action and adequate funding to complete the process of electoral reform that the Commission decided on in the public interest more than six years ago. And we are opposed, completely opposed, to the reform agenda of the Dominica Labour Party government as made known to us in a recent sitting of the Parliament which seeks to legitimize bribery treating and introduced overseas registration of voters. Linton went on to highlight what he considers the key elements of electoral reform, which are an accurate register of voters, including a registration of all registered voters, the provision of voter identification cards, enforcement of provisions in the law against bribery, impersonating and other electoral offenses, equal access to the media, especially state-owned media, and campaign finance reform. In electoral reform, for which we seek adequate funding for the work of the Commission in that regard, we are concerned with voting by electors living overseas. These voters, these citizens of Dominica, need lawful facilitation. We need lawful facilitation of registered eligible voters living overseas to vote in general elections in Dominica. The practice of any political party paying millions of dollars from undisclosed sources to transport thousands of voters from various overseas locations to vote is illegal, is corrupt, and it represents a dangerous obstacle to free and fair elections. We need as well fair access for the opposition to the media, to the news and current affairs programs of all state-owned, state-operated or state-controlled media. And we need campaign finance reform. Meanwhile, Minister for Foreign Affairs and CARICOM Affairs, Francine Barron, asserted that the government has been cooperative and willing to provide the Electoral Commission with the resources necessary to make those changes. has on many occasions signified, signified its commitment to introducing voter ID cards for elections. And Madam Speaker, that necessarily involves a clean-up of the electoral list or the electoral register. A 
that, Madam Speaker, you will recall that at first the Electoral Commission had wanted to introduce the OECS Multipurpose Identification Card, or the MPID card. And they informed later that they had problems with the supplier. I think the supplier had sold its business and so on. And so they had to switch to another system, which was even more sophisticated than the MPID, Madam Speaker. And so the Electoral Commission requested that the government provide it with the resources to implement electoral reform. They asked government to make the funds available for the new ID card system and for the implement implementation of the confirmation exercise, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, what the Electoral Commission asked for, the government agreed to. Government has approved over $6.1 million, Madam Speaker, for that project. $6.1 million. And government has also approved the staff requirement that the Electoral Commission has asked for. Baron informed that it is her understanding that the Electoral Commission is moving forward with the process, having installed the ID card system and tested it and trained staff, but it is the opposition themselves who have been preventing electoral reform from taking place. What they are waiting on to move full speed ahead and start the confirmation process, start issuing the ID cards, Madam Speaker, but they cannot do so unless and until the legislation has been passed by this parliament to enable them to proceed, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, the legislation in question was reviewed by the Electoral Commission over several months, clause by clause, line by line. And when they completed their review, Madam Speaker, it came back to the government and the chief elections officer was empowered by the commission to work with the AG's office to finalize the legislation, Madam Speaker. And he did so. And we came here with it. But the opposition, they blocked it, Madam Speaker. The, people, the same people who want electoral reform, the same people who want ID cards, the same people who want the voters list to be cleaned up, Madam Speaker. But the legislation that is necessary for that to be done, they don't want it to be passed, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Electoral Office is ready. She pointed out that the opposition is attempting to alienate Dominicans living outside the country. Citizens who are out there working hard, who are sending remittances to their family, Madam Speaker, who are sending remittances to help to build this country, Madam Speaker. The leader of the opposition is saying to them, I don't care how you do it. Find the money and come home within six months to re-register. If you cannot do that, you're out. That's it for you. Don't think you're going to be able to vote in the elections again. Is that the message we want to send to our hard-working Dominicans outside there, Madam Speaker? Ma Madam Speaker, this government led by Roosevelt's carrot will never allow that, Madam Speaker. Never. We will not be party to any unjustified disenfranchisement of people, Madam Speaker. We will not be party to any denial of the right of citizens to vote in their country's elections, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in some countries, people have died to get the right to vote. So this is not something that you can take lightly, Madam Speaker. This is a fundamental right of a citizen, the right to vote. And the leader of the opposition wants to take away that right from people who care about their country. People who sacrifice for their country, Madam Speaker. People who come home every election time to vote, Madam Speaker, so that...